Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lorraine Angieri and I post here on my YouTube channel twice a week every Monday and Saturday. And this is going to be a beginner nail tech video for nail art. Alright, before we get into the video, I did want to, or before we get into the nail art, I did want to show you guys how I lay my acrylic, just because since this is a beginner nail tech video, I felt like it would be good to go over some of the things of what I like to do when I am first doing my full sets, just because I do feel like this would help you guys. So, first off, I would definitely recommend getting a an acrylic that you feel like is not too runny and monomer that works well for you guys. This might be some trial and error. The one that I am using right now in the video is Young Nails Monomer. I love their monomer. Um, I know some people ask about the scent of it and it is a little bit strong but I am just used to it. I've used it ever since I started my nail career. So that's what I've been using ever since. Um, some of the monomers, they do have different drying times so keep that in mind. And yeah, I do really enjoy using this with the Montage Nail Supply um, acrylic. I feel like their acrylic is so easy to manage. Um, I do feel like with me in the past, um, I would use the colored acrylic from Young Nails. And for me, it was a little bit too runny for me. And I felt like I had to let it dry a little bit before I put it on the actual nail. But I mean you do have to it has a little bit more working time so i guess it has that pro of that this it does have the working time without it kind of like running all over the place so just do trial and error with some products i when i first started i ended up actually buying a small container of things instead of getting like the big ones just because i'm like i don't know if i'm gonna like this but um so yeah and so that's how I started using this. And then uh, Montage Nail Supply it is my local nail supply where they have their own products as well. And honestly, I love their stuff. Um, if you guys need a coupon code for them, it is my coupon code is Lorena10. Make sure to check them out. They have a lot of good stuff. And even their nude acrylics, I do feel like the milk white and the nude acrylics, I feel like they are really, really easy to work with and nice to work with. The size of brush that I'm using right now is a size 16 German haired Skolinski brush and that is actually from Montage Nail Supplies as well. Um, I ended up picking it up one day when I needed a new one just because for a long time I would use a size 12 and I thought it was time for me to upgrade. I would definitely recommend try using a larger brush when first starting because I started out with a really small brush and worked my way up. But now looking back, I do wish I would have started with a bigger brush so then after I could learn how to use it and um, I would I feel like I would be a lot faster at applying acrylic than I am now just because it does take me a little bit more time to use this brush. Are you guys someone who loves a big brush or a small brush? Honestly, I love both. Um, for doing really, really short, short nails, I do like to use a size 12 but um, I am trying to get myself used to this big, big one. And yeah, so hopefully I'll be able to do the one ball method soon. Um, it is a lot of trial and error, you know, you guys. Like, I feel like some people, they expect to be able to get the um, acrylic down, like, in just a few weeks or maybe even one set. They, like, wonder why. Like, why? But it is practice makes per perfect. <laughs> um, so I definitely recommend practice 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 if you guys are a beginner in nail tech and if you guys are getting discouraged don't you guys like it takes time it took me a really long time to be able to know what I know how to do now you know even now I feel like I see improvement from my work this year from last year so never give up on yourself because it is very crucial to stay like kind of working your skills and whatnot but yeah, like everybody has room to grow. Even if you guys are in nail tech and you guys have been doing it for years and years and years, so many different things come out in the industry that, I mean, you end up learning more, finding things that you actually really like, you know. So definitely recommend just stay 
consistent with doing nails, whether it be doing your mom's, your uncle's, your, I mean, your uncle's, I mean, if they let you, you know, why not? But I mean, if you have somebody that's willing to support you and help you practice and whatnot, they also have like this thing where you could put underneath the acrylic um, and it's able to pop off the nails super easy. So you could practice on them and it'll just pop right off. Um, but it's still like easy to file and they're not going to like come off all crazy. So um, yeah, if you have somebody that's willing to let you try and practice on them, definitely, you know, like if it has to be like free stuff or maybe just ask them to pay for your product, you know. And yeah, because I know products is expensive, especially if you're buying really, really good quality stuff. It gets pricey, you know. But so that's kind of how I learned was just kind of practicing on people and practicing on myself. Practicing on myself was a big one just because I would stare at my nails, see what I didn't like, compare them to like people's nails that I actually really really love to look at and I was like oh my gosh her shape is flawless I love these you know all right and the, I definitely recommend getting an effortless coffin tip just because it helps so much cut down that time especially if you're struggling with time management doing nails definitely recommend and when you're applying the acrylic make sure to wipe the brush on the sides of the nail to try to cut down that bulk just because if you slide it down the side it helps maintain that shape because some people they feel like they get the pre-shaped tips and it's like what for you know like my shape still isn't as good if you guys pay attention to one of my acrylic application videos i will mention like how to do it in sliding your brush along the side it helps so 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 much you guys definitely highly 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 recommend doing that method just because it helps wonders it cuts down the time so much time so you don't have to go back and file as much so right here you guys see that I am just having my 80 grit sand or sandpaper my 80 grit file and I'm just going across the edges making sure it's nice and straight and I didn't have no acrylic that dripped under and then just making sure that they're nice and centered and straight. Sometimes what I'll do is put the fingers all together and making sure that they are all pointing in the same direction and you don't have like one wonky one like going off in another direction. And then I like to also take the file going across the top and basically what that does is just cut down the time of using your e-file just because I feel like for me sometimes using the hand file because it is like one inch wide that I am able to cover so much more of the nail than if I were to use the little um the little hand the e-file just because the e-file like I feel like you can use it to cut down time but I definitely love to use the e-file for getting in the cuticle area and prep it is like such a must for that just because you're able to like get into that fine detail with that and with this with the hand file you're able to cut down a lot of the bulk at once and making sure you're getting rid of it um right there you can kind of see me i ended up using the file to push the skin back because if the skin is attached to the acrylic by accident then you end up might end up filing the skin if you don't push it back so i'll hold the skin back and then also push it with the file a little bit I always ask my clients like to making sure I'm not hurting them definitely recommend asking them like oh like let me know if I'm hurting you um like because I don't want to hurt you you know and so I usually I'll tell my clients that just because some clients are more sensitive than others so even if you guys have been doing nails for a really long time like I feel like it's always good to ask them even if you think you are being gentle some clients are just super super sensitive when it comes to filing and whatnot or they just hate the way the feeling of it um but yeah see like going across the top covers so much of the nail and it helps so 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 much and then getting that e-file and going up into the cuticle area the band that i am using right now is a medium sanding bit um if you guys want you guys could go in with something a little bit more fine if you feel like that works for you i don't really like to use a super coarse one unless i'm cutting down a lot of bulk then that's when i'll use the the coarse one but i don't really like using that up against the cuticles just because um if you accidentally slip which i mean i've been doing nails for a long time and accidents do happen and i just feel like with the coarse one if you were to end up hurting them it would just be like 
Ooh, so tender after. So definitely recommend either using a medium or a fine. If you're a beginner nail tech, definitely recommend the fine one just because you are less likely to cut them. All right, and then right here, you guys see me, I am getting my OPI Red Polish. And this is a gel polish. The name of it, I'm not quite sure. Let me double check really quick. All right, the red polish is color so hot it burns. B E R N S. <laughs> and it is a super, super pretty color. Really pigmented and cute. And I'm just going to dab some on my little stone thing right here. I have gotten this off of Amazon. If you guys want me to link it down below, I definitely do that. Just ask me and I will go ahead and link it for you if this is something that you're interested in. And then right here, I'm just going to go in and fill in the lines. Um, if you, I feel like with me, next time I do this, if somebody else wanted this design, I would definitely go in with a bigger brush. Um, when you guys are painting and you are a beginner nail tech, I definitely recommend using your pinky. Like you see how I have my pinky rested on my other fingers? Highly recommend that. It makes sure that your hands are super, super steady when you guys are doing this nail art because you don't want to end up being all shaky and stuff and getting brushes that are comfortable to you. Some people, they they like really, really long brush, like the bristles to be very, very long on their brushes. And honestly, I work both ways. Um, I've seen on the internet like where they feel like the longer brushes, it does take a lot more of the bounce. So if you're like really shaky, the bristles kind of absorb more of the shakes than anything. So you don't have to worry about like being super shaky. With For me, I do feel like I have a little bit more control with a shorter haired brush. So this is one that I have gotten off the internet it was a bow and brush i think i got it for three dollars but i try to find them for you guys and i cannot find them for the life of me but i know they have a set of it for like nine dollars i'll go ahead and link it down below if you guys are interested in that you can definitely check that out and so um i depending on like the design that i do i will kind of like go over repetitively and then just like kind of like keep on swiping until it is of the color that I want just because I did sheer out this color a little bit all right and then I'm gonna do my stripes across in this step I would definitely recommend curing the vertical lines first and then going in with the horizontal lines after um, just because it would give you more of that like plaid type thing without having to actually paint in the squares. I do still like that I painted in the squares that you'll see in the next clip, but um, you guys will have like more of the dimension without having to do as much work. But I do really like this brush. For my nail art, I do feel like working with a shorter one for me, I actually really do enjoy it. Sometimes you'll see me with a longer hair brush, but I feel like not too often, you guys. I like skinny brushes as well. Um, and certain paints also have to do with your art. So with me, I do like to work with very pigmented stuff. I definitely would recommend Tracy's Nails for that just because her stuff is super pigmented and you don't end up having to go over and over the nail design, which is so nice when you guys are a beginner nail tech because especially if you are super shaky and you're trying to put down color and then having to go over it to make sure it's super pigmented um that is kind of a pain just because the first time it, oh, before when I was like beginner I would try and use like a gel or something or like something that was super sheer and then next thing you know like I would end up messing up my design or it looked like super bubbly because I couldn't go exactly over it but with designing it is or with hand painted stuff it is trial and error, you guys. And honestly, I definitely, again, recommend working with gels. Just because with gels, if you don't like it, if you have, like, that's why I do everything in, like, cure, like, like the first part of plaid, I cured it. Then the second of plaid, I'm curing it, you know? Because if there's something that you don't like, and then after it's, like, your next step, like, after you put everything in the light and you love the way it looks, and then let's say you pull it out and you're like, oh my gosh, like trying to draw another line and it ends up way too thick. You're able to wipe that right off without having to compromise the rest of the design because the rest of the, of the design 
is already cured and on there and you don't have to worry about messing it up and you could just take like a little lint-free cotton pad and wipe it down and so that's why I love working with gel especially if you are a beginner nail tech I definitely recommend because I know how frustrating it could be like especially if you were working with regular polish to allow it to dry then work on the next step and then work on the next step and then like and then one thing if you mess up trying to paint over especially if it's like the color that you use is a darker color it is such a pain in the butt I've been there before you guys I know what you're going through so definitely find things that work for you in my case I do love using the short haired brush and I do have a really really long haired brush as well um, that I would recommend and it is actually pretty cheap so I'm going to go ahead and put it in the description for you guys just because I want you guys to be able to find them and if you guys don't need to spend a crap ton of money on brushes of course I'm going to help you save some money because I know when I first started I wouldn't get the super cute stuff I would just get the stuff that is like kind of like just more like I'm able to use in the outcome of it also be good you know so definitely 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 recommend Tracy's nails for the art her stuff is amazing and I feel like since it is kind of like on the a little bit on the thicker side you don't need much of it and you guys are actually able to like paint and it be super smooth and then also with the brushes like if I could find the ones it comes in a three pack and it has three brushes and it also has like a shorter haired brush too so I will go ahead and link those down below but if you guys want a super cute bow and brush I will go ahead and also link that because those have like the little diamonds so sometimes it, like I mean when I could afford it I and did end up like upgrading to my other brushes but as you can see they're a little bit tore up so I did end up getting new ones but this was a video before I had gotten the new one so yeah Sorry, you guys, I feel like I'm, like, talking a ton. But, and I would recommend also either getting, like, one of those little ring things or a stamping plate to do, um, or, like, a little plate just to put your paints on. Just because I do feel like it helps a lot and you don't have, like, a little foil floating around. Because before I would use a piece of foil and dab my art paints on it. And this is so much easier and nicer. I spray it with alcohol and wipe it down. And I do feel like it helps a lot. This brush that I got right here, I got this at Montage Nail Supply, and basically it's to clean up the cuticles and whatnot, and I love it. I feel like it helps a lot um, with cleaning things up, and since it's like a sturdy brush, I feel like I'm able to get like a lot more of the pigmentation off faster than if I were to use a super small brush. Sometimes I will go in with my 3D nail art brush. If you guys had seen in my video before this one, um, I will also use that brush to clean up as well. Just because it has a nice point to it. So if I need to be like super detailed, but since this was like more of a line, that's the reason why I ended up pulling this one out and cleaning up with this one. Alright, and I'm going to have her cure that for 30 seconds. You guys could go for 60 if you'd like. And then see right here, you guys could see that I am going in with the little lines in between the plaid just to give it a little bit more dimension and I'm only going on the horizontal lines I am not going um on the in-between but I really really love this um so you guys could see that this brush has been abused but sometimes when you guys find a brush that you really like and you've been using it for a long time sometimes it's hard for me to throw them out let me know if you guys relate to this just because I know with me it's so hard to throw them out like even though they look horrible on camera and I feel a little bit embarrassed even <laughs> having it but I mean I just love the brush the brush itself is still a good brush so I couldn't throw it away Alright, next you guys, I am going to be getting this white from Tracy's Nails, and the black is also from Tracy's Nails, if I didn't mention that before, but I am going to get this white and I'm getting a dotting tool. On the opposite side of that cleanup brush that I showed you guys in the last clip, it is it does have a dotting tool on the back of it, and then I'm going to go ahead and put dots. I ended up putting the dots like this thinking that maybe once I had like swiped my brush through it would be like a perfect design but in my case it wasn't so again trial and error you guys this was a learning experience for me too and then um getting the brush and wiping a majority of the paint off 
but you see even though I did end up having like those dots of paint I feel like it ended up making my line thicker but I am still able to work with it just because I am going to go in with my dotting tool and go over where I put those little dots and go from there. And I'm making another lines in between that going out. Usually when I do snowflakes, I don't ever really have like a photo that I go off of. I kind of just go off of the set of nails and what I think that would look cute. And if I do find inspo, I will end up like kind of maybe going off that, but I always end up doing it different. I never do the snowflakes exactly. Um, it's very, very, very rare if I do. <laughs> and you see me wiggling it back and forth because I was happy about the design. And I'm getting this Koopa Matte top coat and applying it over all the nails. I am super in love with this Milky White. This is one that I definitely recommend putting in your collection. All of my clients really, really, really love this. Before I applied the top coat, I did make sure to put it in the light for 60 seconds. The reason why I like to put the, um, the white and the black in the light for a little bit longer is just because sometimes they do end up tending to smear a little bit and if they're super pigmented colors then of course it takes a little bit longer to cure and I'm gonna get my montage resin this stuff is bomb you guys and I'm just gonna go ahead and dot that right here a super super small dot just because since this charm is so tiny um I don't want it end up putting like a big old glob and it spilling out the sides of the gem just because I don't like the way that looks and then I'm going to go ahead and dot this on the other side and adding one. Even though it is such a simple thing to do, I feel like it makes this set look so good, you guys. I am in love with the set, how it turned out. I hope you guys really enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to my channel. And as usual, I'll be back with more videos. Please make sure to hit that like button. It does help with the YouTube algorithm and it does help my video get out there more. So if this video helped you in any way, shape, or form, make sure to hit that like button. Alright you guys, have a great day and as usual, I'll be back with more videos. Bye!